Greetings, everyone. Let's continue our discussion on design disciplines by talking about a new field in design, which is referred to as interaction design. And we'll talk about what this discipline means. The originator of this term, interaction design, were two people, uh, Bill Morgridge and Bill Verplank. Bill Morgridge was the co-founder of a really well-known design firm in the world called IDEO. It's I-D-E-O. That's how the, the, uh, the word is spelled. And this company, this design firm, has been at the forefront of lots of really interesting activity happening in the design field. So Bill Morgridge was one of the designers who played a part in coining this term, along with Bill Verplank, uh, who was also a designer and a researcher. Together, Verplank and Morgridge came up with this phrase, interaction design, to describe a new and an emerging field of design that essentially focuses on some of the aspects of how people interact with objects, and in some cases, focusing more on a range of new digital electronic devices that we use today. So let's look at a quote from Bill Mogridge's book called Designing Interactions. This is what Bill Mogridge said several years ago. He said he felt that there was an opportunity to create a new design discipline. What would that focus on? On creating imaginative and attractive solutions in a virtual world. So we clearly know that in the physical, tangible world, you interact with products all the time, such as this pen or the computers, etc. But in a virtual world, where one could design behaviors, animation, sounds, and shapes. So what he's talking about in this case is that there's a new design discipline that focuses on this virtual world that is a digital world, and to design things like how do people come up with new behaviors for these? How do we come up with behaviors for the artifacts themselves? What kinds of animations can we come up with? What kind of sounds make sense? And what kinds of shapes will take place as a part of this interaction as well? And then he goes on to say that this is the equivalent of industrial design, but in software rather than three-dimensional objects. So the world of industrial design or product design essentially focuses on tangible, three-dimensional physical devices. Interaction design does look at that as well, but it also takes into account what is happening on these tangible devices if there is some kind of a screen that is on that device. So this is this is how this new discipline of, of interaction design came up. It was Verplank and, and Mogridge who coined the term. Essentially, they're referring to this whole set of new devices that we use in our lives today, and how can we shape the interaction between those devices and the people who, who, who use them. So here's a diagram um, of interaction design that shows that interaction design, in a sense, is a very complex field, and it's made up of a variety of other disciplines. So in a sense, interaction design brings together knowledge, methodologies, philosophies, processes, and techniques from a whole range of disciplines. Let's zoom into this a little bit more and take a look at it more carefully. So what you see here is you see interaction design right in the middle. This is where the, the discipline resides. And what you see around in that yellow circle is things like usability engineering, which looks at how things are used, human-computer interaction that has been a discipline by itself for a while, what is the interaction between people and high-tech devices, um, interactive controls, how do controls uh, play a role. There's a whole field called ubiquitous computing. Uh, and this essentially refers to how, as more and more technology gets embedded into more and more of our devices, we will find this notion of ubiquitous computing where computers in some form or of another, either in forms of just individual chips or circuit boards in, with sensors, how are they existing all around us? Interactive environments, you might walk into a museum and see how museums are set up with interactive uh, exchanges. Media installations is another one where you use specific media like video, like audio, sound, etc., to bring more interactivity into, into spaces. Guidance systems, this is something that refers essentially to how people find their way across environments. Application design, on a lot of our phones these days, on smartphones, there are applications or apps that we use. User interface design, this essentially refers to the actual physical screen that you will see on these devices. So what are the icons? Um, how, do they, how do you swipe across them? All of those are aspects of interaction design. User interface scenography, how do those scenes unfold on these user interfaces? 
And then scenario design, which essentially refers to how the scenarios unfold over time and what could be some potential scenarios that you could create before you actually design these products. So all of these play a big role in creating this discipline of interaction design. And then you can also see that it relates to some other fairly large fields. So the whole area of human factors and ergonomics refers to the physical, cognitive, and cultural interaction between people and objects. Very often it focuses on physical devices. It connects to industrial design or product design because very often these screens or these interactive moments are on physical devices. It connects to architecture as well because in some cases you might be designing interactive spaces, interactive environments. There's some relation to marketing as well. So one of the things you do have to think about as you design new interactive systems is what role does business play in that? You can see information architecture. This is a more technical discipline where if you're designing a website, for instance, or a mobile application, how does the information get to the user? How is the information structured that people can get to the screens that they, that they need to? The dis discipline of computer science is a part of it as well, because in many cases, software design has to be done. So people might need to know some aspects of programming and coding. User experience design, this is also an emerging and a new discipline and a new word for what this, uh, this discipline refers to. Essentially, it is looking at as someone engages a device or a screen or a product or a space or building for, for that matter, what is their experience as they go through the processes of interacting with it? And that essentially refers to user experience design. Communication design, also referred to sometimes as graphic design plays a big role because all of these designs of icons, of screens, et cetera, are the role of communication designers. Motion design as well. How do you, for example, in case of gaming, how do you create specific spaces that people can move through? How do you create animations? All of that is a part of motion design. Then one more here, which is referred to as audio engineering, which essentially is looking at sound design, but more from a technical perspective. So as you look at this entire map, of interaction design. You can see that it connects to a, a wide range of disciplines from product design to architecture to software design and development as well. So it's a, it's a broad discipline, it's a new discipline, and it's something that is gaining significant um, engagement across all design disciplines. Interaction design sometimes is also referred to as UI design or user interface design. Again, that refers to the specific design of the screens, or it's referred to also as UX, which is user experience design. So sometimes you might come across the term UI UX, which often refers to these two things in the context of interaction design. So just to give you a quick sense for why interaction design is important and how it is practiced and where it is practiced, as we all know that our interaction with information our interaction with uh, the, the internet, with the World Wide Web, often happens through such devices as laptop computers, right? So understanding how we interface with these devices, whether it's through the keyboard, with our physical interactions, or seeing what's on the screen, or with a mouse, all those are moments of interaction. And those interactions play a big role in how we experience these technologies, but also how these technologies are windows into a broader world. So if the interaction is well designed, we have a better experience of engaging with this universe of the World Wide Web. We often use tablets these days, so these are slightly smaller devices, very often inspired by touch screens. So in this case, there's a whole new form of interaction. You don't really have your physical keyboard, but you actually have a screen, and all of the interaction happens with your fingers. You might use a pen also in some cases, a digital pen of some kind, but the, the nature of the interaction is different than what you would with a laptop, right? So this is a new form of interaction. Smartphones are yet another uh, device that is used that are used quite often these days. And in this case, it's like a tablet, but it's yet significantly smaller. It's a lot more mobile, and you often use two thumbs in order to work with these devices. So again, a new form and a new need for interaction design with these smaller devices. And then. The newest entrant into this area is the whole area of smart watches, right? Watches that don't just tell you time, but you can do a whole lot more on these watches, like read your email, send messages, receive messages, access websites. All of these are happening today on one of the smallest devices that we can use today, the smart watches. <clears throat> Let's take an example of something like an ATM or an automated teller machine 
which is essentially a bank machine where you might walk up to it, put your card in, and, and get cash, get money from it. If you think of a device like this, you, know, this, you can think of this as a kiosk design of some kind. You can see that in this case, there is um, a couple of things happening. You have a screen here, so you can see there is a, an area where you can interact with visually. There is another screen here as well. It's a smaller screen, but this is where you get information about your bank account. Uh, this is where you actually interface with the, the device visually. And then as you look around, you will see a whole range of other devices as well. So you can see that there are buttons over here. You can see the buttons here. There's a keypad over here. So now in this case, you actually have a physical button that you push with your, with your fingers. You also find a space where you might have to either insert your card or you present your card for a, a camera. You might have to insert checks or other documents. So you can see that in terms of what happens with this device, you have a visual interaction, you have a digital physical interaction, and in some cases there are other things happening down here as well where the, the, the machine might offer you some things, like it might give cash or it can give you a receipt. So in this one device, you can see several forms of interactions happening, and what an interaction designer might do is to look at the physical device itself. Is it at the right angle? Is the screen visible? Are the buttons accessible, whether you're small, or whether you're tall, whether you're in a wheelchair, or whether you're standing? Is it visible for someone who might have poor eyesight? So all of those considerations have to be taken into account by an interaction designer. So you can see that it's, it's a pretty complex uh, area to look into. Um, as we get closer to this, you can see again here also there are several modes of interaction. Clearly, you have the screen for visual interaction. And then if this is a touch screen, you actually have a digital interaction with that as well. There are places where you can insert things or get things. Uh, there's a slot here for the card to enter. There might be a slot here for receipts or for checks. Uh, and then, of course, there's a physical interaction. You have the keyboard on which you can put numbers, amounts, etc. So this gives you, again, a sense for what exactly happens with a kiosk-type machine. Some things to keep in mind, as we look at this, you will see that not only are there numbers on this, but you can see a series of braille dots, right? So one thing to keep in mind is not all people have similar abilities. Some people have a different set of abilities. And in this case, if a, if a person is visually impaired, if they are blind, they may not be able to see those numbers, but they can actually feel the numbers and get the information that they need. So interaction designers have to always think about the user. They have to think of people. They're designing for people. And so the area of human-centeredness is really important for interaction designers. They have to think of who are we designing for and how can we make that interaction between that user and that device as easy, as convenient, and as comfortable as possible. So in addition to the design of the physical device itself, like the kiosk, or the, the watch, or the phone, or the tablet, et cetera, you also have to think of software. Um, interaction designers often learn some aspects of software development, software design, and they often work very closely with computer scientists, with electrical engineers, with software developers. Because at the end of the day, what has to happen is all the interaction that happens on the screen also has to be just as easy as the physical device itself. So they do learn some software development and work with software designers as well. One of the emerging areas in interaction design is that of app development. Right? So on any phone, you can see that there's a whole range of apps from the actual dialing of the phone itself to messaging, to images, to notes. And these have to be designed visually, but also from um, the information perspective. There has to be icon development. So creating an accessible interface so that someone can understand what it means, but also be able to work on it and get the get the work done is also just as critical. So interaction designers spend quite a bit of time thinking of the exact design of the app itself, exact design of the icon. So what, what is this icon saying? Well, you might say that, well, it's, it's suggesting that there's some sort of a wireless interface, right? So by the design of the app itself, you know exactly what it means. So that's really important for interaction designers to think about. And then the physical, tangible controls as well. So in many cases, you might have the controls on a screen, so you just touch them. But in some cases, you might actually have physical controls. So you have to dial up the knob, dial down the knob. You have to do a push button. You might have to watch how this, this arrow moves across the, the screen. You might have to plug something in over here. So devices have both. They have these physical controls, but they also have visual 
um, screen-based controls. And it's important for, for interaction designers to understand both of them. One other area where interaction design is really important is gaming. Right? In terms of game design, game development, very often the entire sets have to be designed, entire environments have to be created, new characters have to be designed, and then the design of the devices themselves. What is the nature of the device? Is there a screen on it? What are the controls like? Um, giving people an immersive experience. When people are playing games, they need to feel like they're actually in that environment. And how do you do that through interaction? That's also a really important part of uh, interaction design. There are three things that are driving the discipline of interaction design. One is the emergence of digital technologies. Right? We access the world through a whole range of digital devices like laptop computers, phones, smartwatches, etc. And therefore, how we interact with these digital technologies is something that interaction designers think about quite a bit. They have to make sure that they understand how these operate. Another important thing is behavior. Right? We cannot always predict how people might behave with specific artifacts. Like in, in some cases, to get laundry out of uh, the, the machine, you might have to jump right into it. But in some cases, you might just have a, a, an interaction where it just uses your fingers. So our behavior and the behavior of the products that we design has to be carefully, carefully calibrated, and, and interaction designers focus on that quite a bit. They look at people, they look at people's behaviors, and they use that in their design process quite a bit. And finally, one really important thing is social interaction. How do these devices correct, create a connection between people? How is the social interaction evolving, and what can we do as interaction designers to make that an easy and a convenient interaction? So these are the three really important things for interaction designers to think about, digital technologies, behaviors, and social interaction. So to wrap up, I just wanted to come back to this diagram and uh, have you understand that interaction design is a complex and a broad discipline that relies on a whole range of other disciplines, human factors and ergonomics, industrial design, architecture, information architecture, computer science, communication design, user experience design, motion design, and then a whole range of other smaller things that are involved in this as well. So to wrap up, uh, interaction design is a discipline that looks at the interaction, the engagement between people and devices, buildings, spaces, but very often the focus is on digital technologies, behaviors, and social interaction. Thank you.